What's good y'all, welcome back to my channel, Chrissy Talks, y'all come me Chrissy, and today we have a true crime video, so I'm trying to kind of keep them like semi-influencer based, so today we'll be talking about Isabella Guzman, the girl who murdered her mother and went viral on TikTok almost seven years later. So I'm excited about this video, I'm feeling kind of shitty, so let's go ahead and talk about this shit. So Isabella Guzman was born in June 1995 in the United States to her parents, Robert Guzman and her mother, Yunmi Hoy. She was a Gemini, as some of y'all are wondering. A good amount of these serial killers be Gemini. When she was younger, she was described to be not like the other kids. So she didn't smile, she didn't play, she didn't really talk to her parents. I'm not gonna say she wasn't normal, because you know, what the fuck is normal, but she just didn't act like the average kid. And apparently, even as a child, she was always bitter and full of hatred towards her mother. So she and her parents grew up in a poor household, and so her parents weren't always able to give her everything that she wanted. They weren't always able to afford all the gifts, all the toys, or whatever else. Isabella wanted and this kind of fueled her anger and hatred towards her parents. Parents hoped that when she grew older she would be able to understand that they didn't have a lot of money and to understand that she wouldn't be able to always get what she wanted but the exact opposite happened she just grew up with more hatred and more attitude towards her parents. Eventually her parents did get a divorce while she was still young. Allegedly it was because her mother had an affair or there was some type of misunderstanding but nonetheless her parents did break up and even though she didn't have the greatest relationship with her mom she eventually moved in with her and that just caused more trouble. So shortly after Isabella moved in with her mother in Aurora, Colorado, her mother brought in her then boyfriend and Isabella's future stepfather, Ryan Hoy, into the home. And as you can imagine, Isabella was not happy about this. Isabella felt like her mother was replacing her father with Ryan, and so this just sparked more arguments in the home. And this isn't anything out of the ordinary, especially when kids are going through a divorce and then one of their parents brings in another significant other, which is why it's important for the parents to make sure the kid is ready to move on before just bringing in anybody into the house. Now, when she was with her mother in Colorado, she did attend Overland High School where she later dropped out right before she was going to graduate and she spent her newly found time spending the nights at her friends and her boyfriend's house. As time went on, Isabella's behavior grew too much for her mother and it got worse in the summer of 2013 when Yoon Mi Hoi found out that Isabella was sneaking boys in and out of her house while she was at work. It was also reported that the neighbors called the cops a couple times because they witnessed men jumping over the fence into their backyard. So I'm not sure if the neighbors or the police notified her mother but eventually her mom did find out and this led to a huge argument. We already know that Isabella and her mom did argue a lot, but it was reported by her stepfather, Ryan, that this argument was a little bit different. According to Ryan, Isabella spat in her mother's face you already know, <laughs> being black, you guys already know, spitting is like one of the most forms of disrespect. If I try to do that to my mom, y'all. Ryan also reported that in this conversation, Isabella was much more disrespectful and much more threatening, so much so that her mother was scared of her. And I'm sure if you guys watch other true crime cases, this is not the first case where a parent was murdered by their child, but they've expressed beforehand that they were scared of the child. Now you guys already know me, okay? It's fucked up kids. And as a parent, you know your child, and I feel like if you get to a point where you're scared of them, Listen, if I feel like you're gonna kill me, I gotta kill you before you're killing me, okay? <laughs> you should not be living in fear in your own home with your own kid, you feel me? Now, following this argument, Isabella actually sent an email threatening her mother with three simple words you will pay. Now this led you need to call the cops and actually leave her home until she felt like it was safe enough to come back. Now the police came on some beyond scared straight type shit and they were just like, listen, you are 18 years old and your mom has all the rights to kick your ass out. So they basically told her that her mom would kick her out if her behavior continued and they gave her a warning before they left. Now after speaking to Isabella and her mom, the police concluded and determined that they were family issues between the two, but it appeared to be resolved according to what was stated in the court document. Now according to Ryan, after the police left, Isabella went into her room and her mom went to work. However, her mom was still terrified so she asked her ex-husband, Robert Guzman, who was also Isabella's father, to come by the house and talk to their daughter. Just three hours before Yuni Hoy's murder, Robert Guzman entered the home and he and Isabella went to the backyard garden to talk about the relationship between her and her mother. According to Robert, they were sitting in the backyard looking at trees, looking at animals, and he was explaining to her how she needed to respect her mother, how she she was her elder and she needed to have respect for her parents. Now after the conversation, Robert went home genuinely feeling 
like this made an impact on their relationship. However, he later said that obviously it didn't do nothing because hours later this thing happened. Now I feel like the conversation that Robert had with Isabella wasn't the conversation that they needed to have. I felt like it shouldn't have been a sit down conversation where it's like you need to respect your mother, she's your mom, she's your elder. It'd be that set. Then really it should have been like, what are your feelings towards your mother? Why do you feel this way and how could we fix it? Now like I said earlier, Robert did leave the conversation feeling like he did something and he got to Isabella. But hours later he would find that his ex-wife got murdered by his daughter. So later that same night on Wednesday, August 28th of 2013, Yunmi came home exhausted from work and she greeted her husband and told him that she was going to go upstairs to take a shower. Ryan was just downstairs watching TV, eating his food until he heard a thumping sound coming from upstairs and his wife screaming out for his name. He ran upstairs but before he could do anything Isabella quickly shut the door and locked it and he wasn't able to get inside to his wife. So Ryan was left helpless banging on the door with the shower running and him hearing the screams of his wife. Ryan eventually pulled himself together and he called 911 and he told him that he believed that his wife was being attacked. He also noticed blood running underneath the door while his stepdaughter was brutally murdering his wife and he wasn't able to do anything about it. He told dispatches that he wasn't able to get into the room because Isabella locked the door. As soon after he said that, he heard his wife say her last word, Jehovah, before Isabella opened the door and she was standing there with a bloody knife in her hand with a blank expression. She was standing there in nothing but a pink sports bra and turquoise shorts, emotionless with a blank face staring straight ahead and she walked right past Ryan Hoy and went downstairs. Ryan tried to revive his wife but he knew by the scene of the crime that she was already dead and when police came to the scene, which they described to be pretty gruesome, they also pronounced that she was dead at the scene. Yumi Hoy's body was found on the upstairs floor of this family home in Colorado, naked and bloody on the bathroom floor next to a baseball bat. It was initially reported that she was stabbed 79 times, 31 times to the face and 48 times to the neck and the torso. Now I want you guys to just imagine this really quick. This motion of stabbing and having to do it 79 times like bitch my arm is getting tired and I haven't even reached 10 times yet so to do it 79 times that shit is fueled by way more than just hatred and bitterness and y'all it wasn't even 79 times it was initially reported 79 times however it was later reported in the autopsy that Yumi Hoy's body had a total of 151 stab wounds before being beaten by a baseball bat so what blows my mind also is that Ryan Hoy was able to even hear his wife utter the last word, Jehovah, before she passed away. That shit is giving me goosebumps 151 times. That shit is just crazy. 151 times total, 31 times in the face. Now while Yumi Hoy was pronounced dead at the scene, Isabella was on the run. She went to an H Mart nearby, went to the bathroom, washed her hair, changed her clothes, and she actually told the employee that she got raped back in Denver and told them not to call the police because she was scared that they would bring her back home but she was in fear of her father. Now some people have mixed reviews about this because why wouldn't the employees call the cops? Rape is a touchy subject of course we all know and some people don't always go to the police or the hospital right away. So the fact that Isabella asked them not to call the police, I don't think that was weird. However, the fact that a girl is running up to you and telling you that she got raped but to not call the police is a little bit weird and the fact that the employee is going to call the police anyway is also weird because you have a girl that is running in your store telling you that she got raped. I feel like it should be protocol to call the cops anyway. Again, I'm not going to say it's weird for someone who had just gotten raped to not inform the police. However, I do think it's weird in the sense that you're informing somebody that you got raped and they didn't go ahead and call the police anyway. Especially if she was coming from Denver and this took place in Aurora, Colorado. Now after a 16 hour manhunt, she was actually caught the next day. They tracked her down in a parking garage near East Hampton Avenue after somebody called and reported a body in a car around 11.30 in the morning. When the police came, they found no body in the car. However, they did report to find evidence that would link back to homicide that took place earlier. And police did later find Guzman walking out of the parking garage and she tried to tell them that she was not Isabella, she was somebody by the name of Samantha Gonzalez from Cincinnati, Ohio. But the police literally had a picture of her ID and held it up to her face and she still said, I'm not my 
not look like me, but it ain't me. So you already know they took her ass to jail. Now she was held at Arapahoe County Jail without bond, and she was due to be charged that morning. However, she would not come out of her cell, so the judge had to push it back another day. She was facing charges of first degree murder and two counts of a crime of violence. Now, a crime of violence is an offensive felony that involves physical force against the person. And this felony is used to be a sentence enhancing charge. And I believe she got two counts of a crime of violence, one for the baseball bat and another for the knife that she used. Now, it was at the beginning of her hearing where she was caught in these notorious moments of her smiling and frowning and making faces at the courtroom camera. And these were the exact clips that would go viral seven years later on TikTok. But we're going to talk about that in a minute. Now, Isabella was 18 years old at the time and 19 years old during the trial. So she was going to be charged as an adult and eligible for the death penalty. Now, Isabella pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. Doctors would later tell the court that Isabella had been suffering from schizophrenia that had been left untreated for years and throughout this time she had been constantly experiencing delusions. So during the time of the crime, defense argued that she did not know right from wrong and she did not believe that her mom was her mom at the time while she was murdering her. She actually believed that her mom was a woman by the name of Cecilia and she needed to murder her in order to save the world. Now the judge actually accepted this plea deal and she would be admitted to the Colorado Mental Health Institute at Pueblo until she was deemed no longer a threat to society or herself. Now, I'm not saying she did not have a mental health illness. However, this sentence doesn't sit right with me only because of the events leading up to her mother's death. We know that she always had an estranged, toxic relationship with her mom. We know that right before her mom's death, she found out that Isabella was sneaking men in and out of her home. Ryan described that that huge argument was way more threatening, way more disrespectful than her past arguments. Isabella spat in her face. Right before her death, she sent her a threatening email that said you will pay and she mentioned nothing of a woman named Cecilia so to me it's just like this definitely could have been premeditated and then on top of that look how she was acting after she killed her mother she was on the run she was lying to the employees of the supermarket and she tried to lie to police and say that her name was Samantha Gonzalez if you were genuinely going through a delusion and you felt like you saved the world then why would you be running away from police you know what I mean like again I'm not saying she doesn't have a mental health issue because I mean it definitely definitely takes someone who is going to plea with a reason of insanity to stab their mother or to stab anybody 151 times but I just don't feel like in this situation regarding her mother's death and then looking at what happened around her death it's just it's not sitting right with me. Now when explaining this sentencing George Brockler the district attorney of the 18th judicial district said we punish people who make decisions to do wrong when they knew better and they could have done something differently. In this particular case, I am convinced, based on the evidence that I've seen and the information that's been presented in court, that this woman did not know right from wrong and she could not have acted differently than she did. Given the significant schizophrenia and paranoid delusions, audible, visual hallucinations that she was going through, I was convinced of it and I feel like in the interest of justice, I had to take these steps. So regardless of the severity of this crime, Isabella Guzman was not found guilty for murdering her mother and instead she pled not guilty by reason of sanity and has been admitted in the the Colorado State Mental Hospital ever since. Now before we talk about recent events with Isabella Guzman, let's talk about why this case went viral on TikTok even though she fucking murdered her mom. So why did she go viral on TikTok? because she was pretty. Somebody had uploaded the clips when Isabella was seen in the courtroom and they uploaded with the song Sweet But Psycho by Ava Max. So the lyrics, Oh, she's sweet but a psycho, a little bit psycho. I know she's screaming, I'm a mad in my mind. I mean, the song I guess fits. But of course this led to a whole trend where people were copying her facial expressions, even dressing up in the orange jumpsuit. And of course this feeds into people romanticizing criminals and not taking mental health seriously. And I mean, we can't talk more about how fucked up that sounds. And this is not the first time we've seen it with Ted Bundy. And y'all, Ted Bundy was never cute. Like, personally, I find Jeffrey Dahmer more handsome than Ted Bundy. But like, in all the research, documentaries, videos, movies surrounding Ted Bundy they always found him attractive but I would say it's probably because of his demeanor like he apparently was charming and that kind of drew people in but I'm just like sir ma'am this is not cute again it just takes away from the real issue at hand which was her mental health and the act of violence that she committed onto her own mother and it's like obviously people are not taking it seriously and people was just acting sick like they had no goddamn sense so y'all my camera is dying so we can talk more about this whole TikTok situation 
in the comments. Comment down your thoughts below on that. But let's quickly talk about an interview that Isabella recently did back in 2020. In 2020, Isabella did an interview with Rick Salinger with CBS4, claiming that she was back to full health and she's ready to return to society. Not myself when I did that. And I have since been restored to full health. I was abused at home by my family for many years. My parents are Jehovah's Witnesses. And um, I left the religion when I was 14. And the abuse at home worsened after I quit. The fight with my mom was terrible. And um, I was injured in the process. I have the scars on my hands. Um, I don't know if you can see or not. I'm not mentally ill anymore. I'm not a danger to myself or others. If I could change it or if I could take it back, I would. Isabella said for years she's been abused at the hands of her parents because they were Jehovah's Witnesses. So if you remember back to the night that her mother died, according to Ryan, he heard her say Jehovah as her last word. Now Isabella said she left the religion at age 14 and that only made the abuse from her parents become even worse. But she said that if she could change what she did back then, she would. And she was even showing the scars that she got from the attack years ago, which I felt like was weird you're showing me your scars from this attack that you did on your mother and i would expect for you to have some type of scar if you stabbing somebody over 150 times and i'm not sympathizing with you at all for that and i just feel like she's still not showing remorse to her mother you're telling me now that you were abused at the hands of your parents but again, you're not mentioning Cecilia, which was supposedly the whole reason why you murdered your mother. Like, I'm just not buying it, y'all. Now, the court has not granted her any appeals for her freedom, but she is still determined to return back to society and believes that she is in full health. She's taking her medication. According to her, she thinks she's okay. I'm just not sure if she was deluded while she was murdering her mom. Especially now in this video, she's not even talking about the delusion of Cecilia. She's talking about her parents abusing her. But that is the case of Isabella Guzman, y'all. She went viral on TikTok after murdering her mother eight years ago now. Please let me know what y'all think down in the comments below. My camera has been dying for like 20 minutes and I do not want it to just go black on y'all. So so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Follow me on Instagram at MySnapchatHChrissy to s 2 y I love and appreciate you guys and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye guys. Oh, she the girl. Oh, yeah. she the girl. She the girl.